four sisters take the same picture for over 40 years. This is what happened. Seeing how the passing of time can transform people is truly incredible, and what you are about to see next is a stunning example of that. Over the past four decades, this series has been shown around the world, and it remains famous to this day. You do not want to miss this. The Brown Sisters This is the first portrait that appears in Nicholas Nixon's book, The Brown Sisters. On each page of the book, a similar image is seen. Four fresh-faced young women who each stare at the camera with differing degrees of acceptance. Nothing too special, you might think. But what if I tell you that the book dates from 1975? It is now in its third edition and even went on display in galleries around the world. Nicholas Nixon met B.B. Brown in 1970. He was 21 and she was 20. They quickly fell in love and were married the following year. Sometime later, an interesting project emerged, but nobody could have known that it would turn out to become so famous. For the project, Nicholas photographed his wife, Bibi, and her three sisters every year, and that over a 40-year period. The series grew out of boredom, said Nicholas, when discussing his ongoing long-term portrait project. We would go down to visit Bibi's parents on weekends. It was kind of boring, a lot of socializing, and we were expected to show up for dinner every day. Out of a friendly desperation, I proposed, let us take a picture. The photo series, which was shown in its entirety for the first time at the Frankel Gallery booth in Paris Photo, is a testament to the power of one great, simple idea. Out of that idea, though, Nicholas has made a series with an extraordinary power that rests on photography's ability to not only capture the passage of time, but also human aging and the lurking shadow of mortality. In August 1974, he took the first group portrait of the sisters. At the time, they ranged from ages 14 to 24. However, this portrait is not seen in the book, as the negative was immediately discarded. Nicholas was not pleased with the result, as he found it too uninteresting. One year later, in July 1975, he made a second portrait that seemed promising enough to keep. A black and white photograph of the four young women. They are seen wearing summer shirts and pants, standing pale and luminous against the background of trees and lawn. The following June, Laurie Brown graduated from college and Nicholas made another picture of the four sisters. While readying a shot of them, he suggested they line up in the same order. After he saw the image, he asked them if they might do it every year. They seemed okay with it, he said. So it was after the second successful picture that the group agreed to gather annually for the portrait. There were two fixed rules, however. First, all four sisters would have to pose in the same order. And the second, Nicholas would only pick one image to print per year on which they jointly had to agree. After what he tactfully described as some degree of negotiation with his subjects, two of whom wanted to be in the middle of the portrait some of the time, Nicholas settled on the order that would define the series. Left to right, Heather, Mimi, Bibi, and Laurie. Also significant and unchanging is the fact that each portrait is made with an 8x10 inch view camera on a tripod and captured on a black and white film negative. It has been that way ever since. The sisters made a pact that even if they ended up in different parts of the world, they would meet to take the annual family photograph. Over the years, fashion, lifestyles, and passions changed, but their family ties grew stronger than ever. When he took the first portrait, Mimi was 15, Laurie 21, Heather 23, and Bibi 25. In the first picture, the tenured difference between the youngest and oldest sister is not so dramatic but it does slowly begin to register in the following years. By 1981, for example, Mimi still looks like a teenager, though she is 21, while Bibi, sitting slightly behind the other three, looks older and paler. It seems as if she has already experienced much more than the other sisters. That dynamic shifts again in the following year's portrait, in which Bibi looks softer and more at ease, her looks echoing those of Heather. Laurie and Mimi, on the other hand, now seem more defined and inquisitive before the camera. Throughout the series, we watch these women age, undergoing life's most humbling experience. And as with similar projects, there are series within the bigger series when the time seems to move in surges. So much so that you wonder what may have happened in the intervening year to render an individual face so much older or sadder looking. This too is one of the powerful undercurrents of the Brown sisters, the sense that 12 months is just a mathematical marker and that it is life rather than time that makes us all age to different degrees. But there is also something else going on here, something that has to do with the artist's eye for light, shade, and composition, as well as the camera's often unforgiving gaze. 
in Nicholas's portrait from 1996, his shadow falls over the sisters as if alerting us to his invisible and governing presence. Mimi, as in the very first portrait, still looks defiantly at him, as if facing down his camera. In an earlier portrait from 1986, he has moved in close, squeezing the four into the frame. This is perhaps the most tender and intimate portrait of the sisterhood in the series, though as they grow older, the bonds between them seem to deepen and their individual expressions soften into another kind of acceptance, more giving than stoical. As we come to the last pictures, we feel the final inevitability that, as Nicholas says, everyone will not be here forever. While many of us can name things we are grateful for, the lines bracketing our mouths and the loosening of our skin are usually not among them. But the more we study the images, the more we see that aging does not define these women. Even as these images tell us that this is what it looks like to grow old, we also learn this is what endurance looks like. It is the endurance of sisterhood in particular. Nicholas, who grew up a single child, says he has always been particularly intrigued by the sisterly unit, and it shows in these images. With each passing year, the sisters seem to present more of a united front. Earlier assertions of their individuality, such as the arms folded across the chest and the standing apart, have given way to a literal leaning on one another. It seems as if independence is finally no longer such a concern. We see what goes on between the sisters in their bodies, particularly their limbs. A hand clasps another sister's waist, a palm steadies another's neck, and arms embrace arms or are reassuringly slung over a shoulder. The cumulative effect is dizzying and powerful. The deepening of the sister's relationships also extends to the one with Nicholas. Each sister has always had the opportunity to weigh in on the annual selection of which shot would represent that year, but in the past 10 years, the process has become even more collaborative. Once when the sisters were unanimous in a choice that was not the same as Nicholas's, he bowed to their wish. I have to be fair here, he said, and this collaborative bond between him and his subjects shows. The women's eyes now seem to regard the photographer in a glow of trust and sisterly affection. We have gotten close, Nicholas acknowledges. In 2011, Nicholas finally shared his incredible work with the world, and it did not take long before it became famous around the world. When 36 prints were exhibited in a gallery in Granada, Spain, viewers openly wept. And when the project reached its 40-year anniversary in 2015, both the pictures and the book were on display in the Museum of Modern Art. Many were touched, and people from all over the world wrote Nicholas and the Four Sisters beautiful thank you letters. We are all aware of time passing, and us not being aware of it while it's passing, he has said. So seeing the sisters, for a lot of people, gives them a reliable marker that a year has passed. But who are these sisters, you might wonder? The human impulse is to look for clues. You might immediately notice their decidedly glamour-neutral attitudes, and your curiosity may become piqued by their undaunted stares. All four sisters almost always look directly at the camera, as if to make contact, even if the gazes are guarded or restrained. Whenever someone is photographed, the issue of vanity is inevitably raised, but Nicholas has finessed this with his choice of natural light, casual manner, and unfussy preparation. The sisters never discuss what they are going to wear. BB simply says, we just wear what we feel like wearing that day. To watch a person change over time can trick us into thinking we know their lives. But when looking at these pictures, it is very clear that the sisters only allow us to observe them. We are not allowed in. The reluctance shows particularly in the early pictures. The girls are not after attention, a rare quality in the social media age when everyone is not only a photographer, but also often his own favorite subject. In this, Nicholas pulled off a paradox, the creation of photographs in which privacy is also the subject. The sister's privacy has remained of utmost concern, and it shows in the work. Year after year, up to the last stunning shot, their faces and stances say, yes, we will give you our image, but nothing else. Hanging over the whole project is, of course, the big what-if of mortality. What if one of the sisters dies? Will Nicholas carry on? We joke about it, he said recently, but everybody knows that my intention certainly would be that we go on forever, no matter what. The funny question is, what happens if I were to leave this earth earlier? I think we will figure that out when the time comes. In his first published statement about photography, written the year he made the first of the Brown Sisters portraits, Nicholas remarked, The world is infinitely more interesting than any of my opinions about it. But while he may be very modest about his opinion, his photographs clearly show how the camera can succeed in capturing that infinitely interesting world. And to us, the attentive viewers, these silent records can promote a new appreciation of it. 
how did you feel while watching these pictures? And would you do something like this with your family or friends? Share your opinion in the comments and see you tomorrow in the next video.